If I told you that next generation Nvidia would price their X60 class starting at $600, a tier which once targeted PC gamers with a budget of around $200 for their GPU, you probably wouldn't be so inclined to believe that. But if these recent rumors surrounding Blackwell are actually true, then we could be looking at another major shift in the GPU space. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Are next generation GPUs from Nvidia going to go up in price? That is a question I think a lot of folks have on their minds lately, given the recent rumors about how AMD has cancelled their high-end GPUs for their RDNA 4 lineup, as well as the latest rumors surrounding Blackwell, and of course the rise in demand for AI hardware. Now I did make a video about the former last week, so if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on that topic, you can check it out. For this video, I wanted to talk about this article which was posted over at Video cards earlier this week, and in this article they're sourcing a Chinese tech forum called Chip Hell, and also copite 7 kimi from Twitter who's leaked Nvidia stuff before. They mentioned that the next lineup of Nvidia GPUs should belong to the Blackwell architecture, and list out the code names for the various chips. Now if you're not familiar with the lineup of Nvidia GPUs, basically what Nvidia and even AMD do is that they create one large die which will yield the most powerful GPUs for the lineup, for example a 3090 Ti and 3090 stem from GA102, then from that series you get smaller dies which are repurposed for lower tier GPUs like GA104 and that will give you cards like the RTX 3070 and RTX 3060 Ti. So typically Nvidia's lineup looks like this where you'll have a 100 or 102 die for the enthusiast segment, 103 for the high end although it wasn't too long ago where 104 dies were being used for high end cards whereas now 104 dies are being used for more mid range options. Following that you have the 106 die for mainstream GPUs and then the 106 7 die for the entry level segment. Now what Copite reported is similar to this traditional lineup except for Blackwell there won't be a 204 die. After 203 there will be a 205 die, 206 and then 207. Now you're probably wondering who gives a crap? They're just names at the end of the day, and you're right, it's hard to judge based on naming alone on how well Blackwell will turn out. For all we know, Blackwell could be the greatest generation ever, and each of the SKUs could be like 2x faster than the previous. We don't know. However, why this is a bit concerning is if there isn't going to be a 204 die anymore, which is typically used for X70 class GPUs, then this could imply Nvidia is going to be further fragmenting the X70 class GPUs from the top die, hence you'll be getting lower performance at the same price as what you're paying today or even higher given the uptrend in GPU pricing. Nvidia is once again shifting SKUs down in order to increase margins. They did that this generation. One example is the 4060 Ti which uses AD106 and has a die size of 188mm square where previously the 3060 Ti had used GA104 with a die size of 392mm square. And of course we can't forget about the downgrades and other components like memory bus. With that said, the silver line in this is that if it turns out Blackwell is a huge advancement, then die sizes or naming is just irrelevant, and ultimately what it comes down to is how fast it'll be, we just have no information on that at all, but also how far Nvidia goes to gimping specs. If you look at Nvidia's current 40 series lineup, it could easily be an amazing lineup if the 4060s were actually the 4050s, the 4070s were called the 4060s, and so on, but Nvidia is choosing to take the route to maximize margins, give consumers less hardware, and focus on selling their software. Software. This trajectory to sell gamers on software features is why I'm not feeling optimistic on things improving next generation. The next gen RTX 5070 could still have just 12GB of VRAM on a 160-bit bus and a die size of just 180mm square, but Nvidia wouldn't hesitate to sell you that GPU for $799 or even $899 because it has DLSS 4.0 with new AI features, plus no competition. When we last heard, the next-gen flagship would have a 512-bit bus, which is something they haven't done in a very long time. A lot of people took this as virtue signaling that Nvidia is going to deliver a good generation with the 50 series, they'll have better specs for all the SKUs, and they've learned their lesson. All this could mean is that the flagship is what will have beefy specs, it doesn't guarantee that'll trickle down to the lower-end SKUs, and if these rumors of them cancelling GB204 are true, then it just means lower-end, mid-range, and mainstream consumer options are going to get shafted further. GB202 and GB203 will have all the bells and whistles when it comes to specs, and the 5090 I have no doubt will be an absolute monster of a graphics card, but you can bet your wallet it'll be expensive, like $2,000 or $2,500 plus, and the 5080 will probably take the place of what the 4090 sells for now. 
Along with that, there's the possibility that GB202 and GB203 will be manufactured on new nodes, while the lower end stuff is manufactured using older nodes, which will help also maximize profits. You want the absolute fastest and greatest, then you'll have to pay the big bucks for it. Otherwise, the lower end stuff is there, it just probably isn't worth the money. Speaking of software, something that was recently brought to my attention was how, because there is so much demand from companies and corporations that are diving into AI and ordering HPC GPUs, there just isn't enough supply to go around for the demand. The situation sounds a bit similar to what was happening during the crypto mining boom, where individuals and large mining farms were just gobbling up every GPU they could get their hands on to mine with. A developer tweeted that they bought boxes filled with 7900 XTX GPUs and said there's more to come so they could continue to pursue their interests in AI. Tom's Hardware wrote that with the approximate amount of 7900 XTXs there, that would amount to around $60,000, which sounds like a lot for the average consumer, but these are large corporations and enterprises scaling their businesses and operations on a much larger level. And that isn't a lot considering just one H100 GPU goes for around $40,000, and these guys placed orders for hundreds of these. I personally don't think the possibility is that high or this will cause a shortage like what we saw with the crypto mining boom because with crypto mining everyone and their grandma was trying to get in on the action and it was just a matter of setting up a rig, joining a mining pool and letting it run. That's not how it works in the AI industry. Sure there is AI training and machine learning involved but it's not a consistent steady basis like what it was when people were trying to mine Ethereum or whichever coin. But if it does turn out that mainstream GPUs are also being purchased, get ready for $1000 x70 class GPUs or $700 x60 class cards. Now circling back to die sizes and how this relates to AMD. We've seen AMD in the past just join Nvidia when it comes to the pricing schemes. If AMD see that Nvidia are pricing an x60 GPU at like $600, then this just works out perfectly for them. In that scenario, they can roll out a GPU based on Navi 43 and they can call that GPU an RX8800 to justify pricing. If you think that the leak of the 7800 XT doesn't make sense, why would AMD release a 7800 XT that is slower than a 60? 800 XT. It doesn't make sense. Well, it will start to make sense for you in the future. AMD cancelling their high-end RDNA 4 GPUs opens this perfect window for Nvidia to just use older nodes and small dies for GB205 and beyond, because they know, well, AMD won't even have an answer for that. Nvidia is like two generations ahead of AMD. It took AMD's top Navi 31 die to compete with 8103, a die that is smaller than what the previous generation RTX 3060 Ti had. You can argue that for AMD, the GCD is only 304mm square, but you still have to count the total die size because without the MCDs, it's it's not functional. Along with that, RDNA 3's efficiency is nowhere close to the 40 series. Had they scaled Navi 31 larger, it would have been a power hog, which is probably why they didn't. This is why I've been continuously pointing out these marketing antics and the branding of these cards relative to what we've had in the past because it's all part of the way they're conditioning consumers who don't really know any better. You're just going to end up getting less hardware for your money and at a higher price. If you don't know what I mean by this, well, back in 2016, when Nvidia released the GTX 1060, the 1060 and tech power-ups review had no trouble beating the 780 Ti, the gaming flagship from two generations prior. E-Technics made a video recently showcasing the 4060 versus the 2080 Ti, and the 2080 Ti just absolutely smashes the 4060. So don't be surprised when we get an RTX 5060 at $600 and it can't even beat an RTX 3090. I don't expect the recommendations that we have going today to change in the future, and what I mean by this is you'll see big discounts on previous gen stuff or good deals on the used market, and if you want to get the new stuff where perhaps you want the best of the best, you want to play around with the new software gimmick, and money isn't an issue, then yeah, I'll tell people, go get the 5090, otherwise you're probably better off finding a deal on a used 4090, 4080, or 7900 XTX. Like how today, 3080s on the used market offer pretty good value over the new stuff. Like, I'm not sure why you would want to spend money on a brand new RTX 4060 Ti when you can get a 3080 or 6800 XT for cheaper, and they're way faster. At the end of the day, the money just goes back to these companies because when you have an oligopoly, you're not left with much choice, now are you? If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.